live from KSAT 12. The 6 o'clock news starts right now. Of the thousands of migrants who have crossed into the U.S. over the past week, many of them go through San Antonio International Airport, many hoping to reunite with loved ones who were already in the U.S. Daniela Ibarra went to the airport today to talk to migrants who told her about their journey and why they're making it. It's hectic and noisy, but for these migrants, being at the San Antonio International Airport is a victory. No fácil. Annaline from Venezuela says getting here is not easy. Tenemos mucha familia. She wants to give her family a better life. En, en una... Annaline says Venezuela is having economic and political challenges. She says she could barely make enough to eat. It's why she traveled with her daughter for two months to cross the border at Eagle Pass. They're among the thousands who were detained there. Heriberto from Nicaragua says he spent five days in a facility waiting to be processed by Border Patrol. He also came in through Eagle Pass. Heriberto is planning to go to Las Vegas. His first priority is to get a job. Many of these migrants tell me this is the first time they're ever getting on a plane. They say family and friends already here in the U.S. help buy their tickets. Like many others waiting, Heriberto is nervous but happy. He says being far away from family ahead of the holidays is sad, but he knows they're happy he's accomplishing his dream. Annaline hopes to be granted asylum. Until then, she'll be waiting with family in Wyoming. Bracing for the culture and climate change. Daniela Ibarra, KSAT 12 News. And tonight we have an update on U.S. Customs and Border Protection operations in Eagle Pass. CBP officials say that vehicle processing at the International Bridge will remain suspended. Vehicles that are driving into Mexico are not affected by this closure. The bridge has been closed to vehicles coming into the U.S. since November 27th. December is now on track for the highest number of Border Patrol apprehensions ever recorded. According to U.S. Customs and Border Patrol, agents have apprehended more than 9,000 people a day. This comes as Governor Greg Abbott has continued flying migrants to Chicago after city officials began impounding buses he used to send migrants to sanctuary cities. Meanwhile, federal officials say they are doing what they can to curb the surge of migrants. Cities like Chicago and New York, they have had it. But I don't think they truly know the magnitude of the damage caused to the United States by Joe Biden. There's lots we're doing, but there's probably more we can be doing. And, and in order to do it effectively, you got to be in full partnership with uh, Mexican authorities. Mexico's president says sometime next week, U.S. officials will travel to Mexico to discuss solutions to this wave at the border. Around 4 o'clock today, the San Antonio Police Department released new body camera video of two shootings that happened just one day apart. Get on the ground! Put your hands! Oh, shit. These shootings where officers fired. The first happened November 27th around 1 a.m. on West Commerce Street. In the video, two SAPD officers pull over a car and the driver and passenger both jump out and run. An officer chased Stephen Allen Lopez through a parking lot yelling for him to stop. SAPD says the officers noticed Lopez had a gun in his hand. Both officers fired several shots, killing him. At last check, both officers are still on administrative duty. The second shooting on body cam happened the very next day near Somerset and I-35. According to SAPD, an undercover unit was following a car with a wanted man inside named David Trevino. SAPD says Trevino was wanted for a shooting at an apartment complex the Sunday before. Another officer showed up and pulled that vehicle over. That's when Trevino gets out, as you see here, runs across the road into a field with a gun in his hand. SAPD says he shot at an officer, hitting them in their chest body armor. The officers fired back, hitting the suspect. Trevino is now facing several charges, including aggravated assault against a peace officer. Three other people inside that car were also detained. To the holidays now, if you're doing some last minute shopping, you are far from alone, but there are some gifts that require some extra thought. While San Antonio Animal Care Services is not discouraging people from picking out new pets as gifts, they told Garrett Berger they want you to make sure to avoid some of the possible pitfalls. 
Everyone is looking for the perfect gift for your family this Christmas. And it's easy to see why you might think a new furry best friend is just the thing. But there are some things you ought to consider first. You may be thinking of just that magical moment of your kids welcoming that new pet into the family. But it's more than a moment. That animal is now a lifelong commitment. So it's a good idea to have the recipient be involved in the process of picking them out. ACS says they want the adult who's going to ultimately be responsible to be the adopter. We don't want somebody adopting an animal for mom. Uh, we all know sometimes mom doesn't get the present that she wanted. <laughs> she gets the present that she got. And uh, we definitely don't want that situation where some somebody is now the owner of an animal uh, that is not going to be uh, you know, that wasn't really looking for that commitment. And they recommend you go through a reputable rescue group or breeder. Shady roadside stands or sales and parking lots aren't a good idea, as those animals may be too young or sick for adoption. Considering the stress and hustle and bustle of the holiday, it may not be a good idea to bring the pet into your home on the actual Christmas day. Instead, ACS recommends getting the recipient a collar or maybe a little stuffed animal to let them know that they will be getting a pet. You're just going to go together later to pick it out. I'm Gary Berger, KSAT 12 News. Oh, a lot of people will be out going a lot of places this weekend. It is a big one before Christmas gets here and we've got rain to talk about, Adam. Yeah, we do. It's really not gonna get in the way of your plans and activities and any shopping gentlemen that you need to get done tomorrow. <laughs> you should be okay. It's mostly going to be dry. It's going to be kind of like this. We have a few little showers far east of San Antonio, closer to Cuero and DeWitt County and a few sprinkles in Southern Gonzales County and Lavaca County. That's it. Otherwise, it's just going to be the fog and drizzle redeveloping tonight. Another round of dampness to start the day tomorrow. Partly cloudy now, but the low clouds quickly develop and build in. Fog developing, reduced visibility on the road roadways tomorrow morning. So plan for that in the morning, uh, morning damp and sloppiness at times. Visibility is under a mile in some locations through the night and the first part of the day tomorrow after sunrise. And then by 9, 10 o'clock that should lift and we just deal with the clouds. We'll talk more about the real rain when that comes and how much rain we could get and what changes will be happening for Christmas in just a bit. Right. Thanks, Adam. Let's take a look at traffic out there right now. And what do you know? A whole lot of tail lights stop and go as 281 and 410 come together here. The ramp from 281 on to 410. Yes, leading up to North Star Mall. I'm sure that is a hop in place this evening. Well, happening tomorrow, HEB is inviting people out for its annual Feast of Sharing. HEB partners were up and at it this morning, decking out Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center, where this feast will take place. There will be trees, lights, music, games, and of course, the feast, a hot meal for people to enjoy. It is a tradition HEB started in 1989. This is its 31st year in San Antonio, and it's just one of 34 dinners planned across the state and in Mexico. Giving back to the community is something that we do uh, at HEB uh, throughout the year. So giving back uh, during the holiday season is, is just makes it even that much more special. HEB says it will serve about 14,000 meals in San Antonio. The company says it wouldn't be possible without all the HEB partners and volunteers, about 1,500 of them who are coming together to make it all happen. So if you want to attend, here's all the information. It is tomorrow from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. That's 900 East Market Street downtown in Exhibit Halls 3 and 4. Again, the Feast of Sharing is free and it's open to the public. Right now on KSAT.com, if your Christmas Day plans involve a restaurant, we have a list of places that will be open on December 25th. Just make sure to check out the times and the specific locations because they do vary for each place. We also have the city's winter holiday schedule of services on our website too. Some places have different operating hours because of the holidays and garbage collections. That's a big one this time of year. Those are slightly different as well. You can see all this information and our other stories too on ksat.com. Well, here in Texas, we are no strangers to wild weather, but 2023 ran the gamut. A look at major weather events of the past year coming up in our next half hour. And after the break, tamales are a Christmas tradition here in South Texas. Well, up next, we're taking you behind the scenes of a well-known local tamale shop 
to see how they make them every Christmas. This Essay Salutes Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Rodriguez Trial Law. Hi, I'm Fidel Rodriguez Jr. with Rodriguez Trial Law. We'd like to wish all of our military family members a safe, healthy, and blessed Christmas season. I've been a real Christmas tree girly. I love the tradition of going and picking out a Charlie Brown Christmas tree and how it makes a house smell. But once you get it all set up, how can you keep the magic of keeping that real tree alive through the new year, especially if you bought it around Thanksgiving? Once cut down, Christmas trees can live anywhere from four to five weeks. So as soon as you pick it out, before you put it into the stand, Cut one to two inches off the bottom of the tree trunk. This reopens the tree stem so it can drink water. Then water immediately and water, water, water. Your tree stand should hold at least a gallon of water, so you have to make sure it's full, which can mean watering every day. And no, there's nothing that you can add to the water that's gonna help it last longer. These are all commercial suggestions or old wives' tales. Research has shown that plain tap water is simply the best. Keep away from space heaters or fireplaces because this can dry them out and it's also a fire hazard. And when the needles are browning and falling off a lot, it's time to take it out. You can cut it up for your garden beds, put it in your compost bin, or take it to one of the city's Christmas tree drop-off locations. Happy gardening, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Well, the holiday season, of course, a time for joy and togetherness. But for many who are battling mental illness, it's one of the hardest times of the year. Tonight on the Night Beat, we speak with a local man who walks us through how he manages his struggles with mental health. All right, this is one of those if you know, you know stories. If you are new to San Antonio, just know you can't have Christmas without tamales. That is the way it's been for generations. Although tamaladas are usually a family affair, making them at home isn't always feasible for everyone. That's why many are even willing to sleep in their cars, waiting for these doors to open at places like delicious tamales on Calabria. Jesse Degollado says for many, it's just not Christmas without them. Standing in line has become a Christmas ritual and well worth the wait when you have this many different kinds of tamales to choose from beyond the traditional favorites. So much so, people are willing to do this for others who can't be here. She's a little older and so she wanted some tamales for her family, so here I am. But they're delicious, it's a tra tradition, and they're just something about them that's so good. Good enough to share with friends and family. My daughter and her new husband just flew in from California and there's nothing like tamales at Christmas time. To make sure they don't run out after all of these are gone. We produce thousands of dozens at a time. By a small army who gets started very early, early in the morning, much of it by hand to stay ahead of the yearly holiday rush. We produce everything the old fashioned way. We cook our corn, we grind it, we do everything like a grandmother's kitchen. On a much grander scale, of course, to meet the ever growing demand. I've been doing this for 43 years and it never ceases to amaze me. Uh, the amount of people that love our delicious tamales. You got the Hispanics, whites, African Americans, Asians, everybody. If you're from San Antonio and you don't have delicious tamales, you're not a true San Antonian. All part of truly making it a Feliz Navidad. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. Okay, that is one of those stories you can smell, right? You know what it smells like and it smells delicious. Adam, you with me? Oh, I'm with you right mm -hmm. there. Oh, and, and a Kaski tradition too is the uh, kishka, you know, the blood sausage, oh, yes. the Polish stuff. Yep. Mm -hmm. oh. Especially Easter too, Easter time. Oh man. Yeah, we hear about that a couple times a year. Yeah, you do. Yeah. And I have to always get an explanation. <laughs> yeah, my aunt uh, out in Seguin contacted me. Hey, uh, got any kishka on hand? I'm having a having a hankering for it this season. I'm like, me too. A little bit. It's hard to get the cow blood to make it. Get your hands on that. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, no, that's what it takes. Fresh. Anyway, uh, <laughs> let's talk about it. True story. Very, really good stuff. This is Look why it I up. need an explanation a couple times a year. Yes, you do need an explanation a couple times. We don't have time for an explanation. We need to talk 
rainfall and notice our rain chances tomorrow on the low end during the daylight hours. We're talking 20 to 30%, but by tomorrow night into Christmas Eve morning, they're up to 60%. So the showers and storms becoming numerous and fairly widespread. I like what I'm seeing. We're gaining confidence in some good needed rainfall around here. Here's where the storm system is right now. Southern California into Arizona, throwing the moisture into the desert Southwest. And this is going to be some snowfall for the higher elevations of New Mexico and Colorado. The ski resort is going to see another hit of snow, probably about uh, half a foot or so of snow from this. But for us, obviously, we'll get some rain and a weak cold front moving through. Here's the future cast. We'll have the fog and drizzle again tonight and to start the day tomorrow. I wouldn't be shocked if we get a few breaks in the clouds tomorrow afternoon, kind of like we did today. But then we get later in the day, especially around and after sunset and the showers and storms start to fill in on the radar screen gradually. And I really think most of it is going to hold off until Saturday night into early Sunday morning. This is 1230 AM Sunday. The brunt of the action, some heavy rain just west of San Antonio. Don't be surprised if this wakes you up Saturday night or early Sunday before sunrise because there will be some rumbles of thunder, non severe thunderstorms expected and some good embedded downpours. That's what we need. We need some good soaking heavy rainfall and we're gaining confidence in that rainfall potential is on the order of an inch or so. Of course, that depends on where the heaviest downpour is set up, but you could see just over an inch of rain within some of the heaviest downpours. At least that's the potential across our area. Not everybody's going to get that much, but you can cross your fingers for your neighborhood. 62 this morning, 72 this afternoon, afternoon, five hundredths of an inch of rain. That's all we got from the drizzly dampness this morning. Right now we're at 67 dew point of 59. Temperatures aren't going to fall much overnight. We'll be in the 60s this evening and tonight and to, and dew points are right around that 60 degree mark. So we feel some mugginess out there, especially south and east of town where dew points are in the 60s and the humidity is going to stick around through midday Sunday. Still muggy tomorrow in the 60s and early on Sunday. Then that weak cold front comes in and just sweeps away that moisture. It just kicks it out of here and we'll have that crisp, dry winter air with dew points down in the 20s. And that'll lead to some cooler mornings too. So prepare for that. We'll get to that in a moment. Let's talk about tomorrow. 62 at 7 a.m., 70 degrees tomorrow afternoon. So temperatures a lot like today, fairly cloudy and generally dry other than the morning slop with the fog and drizzle out there. But then the thunderstorm chances rise during the evening hours and into Saturday night and early Sunday. We'll be near 70 tomorrow, mid 70s on Sunday with afternoon sunshine. We'll wake up to rain on Sunday, Christmas Eve, but then it turns sunny and pleasant. That sets the stage for a windy and cool Christmas day. 45 at sunrise by the afternoon, only making it to 62 for our high temperature on Christmas. Also, it'll be windy. We're talking a north wind gusting at times up to 30 miles per hour on Christmas Day. So especially the first half of the day, you'll really notice that wind on Christmas Day. And notice the cooler mornings into next week. That's a result of the drier air. Some upper 30s at sunrise most of next week. Coming up at 645, we'll have the bigger picture for travel across Texas over the next few days. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Thank you, Adam. A Christmas tradition for a lot of people is watching the Cowboys together. Mary. They didn't have the greatest showing the last time yeah. they played. We were in Frisco with all of the Cowboys fans watching the game ahead of the TSA Bowl game. Hopefully they can turn it around this week. The Cowboys and Miami Dolphins meet in Florida this Sunday, and the two have a lot in common at this point in the season. We'll break it all down. Plus, Devin Vassell says his young Spurs teammates need to do a better job of playing to each other's strengths coming up right after the break. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys and Miami Dolphins have a few things in common entering their Week 16 matchup. They're both 10-4 and four, and depending on the week have looked like contenders or pretenders. Also, both have struggled against opponents with winning records. One of the two will reverse that trend when they play at Miami this Sunday for a 325 kickoff. The advantage naturally goes to the home team where Tua Tungavailoa has a .792 win percentage. The Cowboys are unbeaten at home, but three and four on the road this season. There's a lot on the line when these two offenses loaded with playmakers collide. 
very fun, you know, different ways of moving players, a lot of playmakers, a lot of speed, uh, particularly, I mean, we have speed, but they got track runners, you know, um, very excited, uh, looking forward to it. C.D. Lamb and Tyreek Hill both competing on a different playing field. Hill leads the league in receiving yards. Lamb is second in the league in receptions and fourth in receiving yards. The San Antonio Spurs looked outmatched once again, falling to the Chicago Bulls 114 to 95 last night. Victor Wembanyama didn't hit double digits for the first time since a nine point effort against the Clippers November 20th. Meanwhile, Devin Vassell was the top performer for the Spurs, going 7 of 15 from the field, contributing 21 points for his third 15 plus points game outing in four games. After the loss that moves San Antonio to a 4-23 overall record, Vassell got real after the game with where the young group is lacking. We got to just be able to play to each other's strengths. I feel like sometimes we might dribble one or two more times and now instead of Wimby being open on a lob, now they crack down to him and now he's not open. Or if we over dribble it, now I'm not open on the three or whatever the case may be. And now instead of it being a good shot, it's a contested shot. And now it's a long rebound. We're trying to get back on transition and it just trickles down from there, from there, from there. So I feel like at the end of the day, we just really got to understand each other. Like we got to understand. I mean, we don't play 20 something games now. I feel like we should have more and a better understanding. And, um, that's not, I mean, it, it's on all of us, and we just got to be better. Yeah, we all want to see Wembenyama utilize to his full capability. The Spurs are back in action tomorrow at 7.30 in Dallas. The last meeting between the two in-state foes was the season opener where the Mavericks beat the Spurs 126 to 119. All right, the countdown is on for the 33rd annual Valero Alamo Bowl, which will feature the highest ranked matchup outside of the college football playoff and New Year's, New Year's Six. And the turf at the Alamo Dome being painted today to kick off bowl week, 12th ranked Oklahoma will be painted on one side. Arizona, or ranked 14th, will be on the other. The bowl game is set for Thursday, December 28th at 8.15 on ESPN. And the field is looking great so far. Arizona will arrive to town tomorrow and the Sooners on Sunday, so they'll get to enjoy the Alamo City for an extended period of time leading up to the game. Yeah, definitely. Big game. Yes. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Still to come here at 6 o'clock, 2023, a wild year for weather in San Antonio. Well, after the break, we take a look at the major weather events of the past year.